When you look at the markets and when you look at the markets, you know, route yesterday, was it justified? I think the move is probably exaggerated. Uh, really, these sorts of moves would only be predicated on real concerns about an Italy exit from the monetary union. Uh, in the current environment, uh, that really isn't, I think, on the table. None of the major parties are really serious about that kind of an approach. What is, of course, being questioned are some of the rules by which Italy has to abide in order to be a full-fledged member. Those, of course, are very negotiable in many respects, and there is some room for fiscal expansion in Italy. From that perspective, I think the market has probably exaggerated the move at this point in time, uh, and this looks like actually an opportunity to re-engage in some of the areas of the market that have sold off. Right. Even if you have fresh elections in July that could potentially see the populists, the Cinque Stelle and the Lega with a lot more power than they have now? Well, I think what we're finding here is, is that it's going to be very difficult, actually, for the two major populist wings uh, to unite on, and find common ground over policies that they could sustain through a period of governance. Um, we are actually, obviously, in a period of here of a highly fractionalized outcome uh, that has divides left and right, north and south in Italy. Uh, there is, obviously, therefore, some concern about the stability of any kind of a government that might emerge out of what now seem very likely to be fresh elections. But what I think is probably the case is, is that no particular constellation of new government will lead us down the road towards concerns about a genuine exit from the Eurozone, the kind of pressures that that would put on the banking system. I think there is obviously an uncertainty premium about not knowing about what comes next, but I would argue that that is pretty fully priced now into markets. Larry, good morning. Tom Keene in New York. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really interested in your thoughts on what the German two-year yield signals to Mario Draghi. I mean, I understand it's contained in Italy. I understand we've got a better uh, Wednesday morning. But the fact is the German two-year yields made another run for a negative 0.76 percent. They have to look at that, don't they? It, it, it certainly is an oddity, right, from any kind of a monetary policy perspective uh, for a central bank that is trying to ease its way out of the super accommodative position that it uh, initiated several years ago, tapering being the first steps, ultimately uh, an eye perhaps towards the middle of next year towards removing negative interest rates. So the current market pricing clearly reflects this sort of distortionary effects of rising risk premium, the flight to quality into the safe haven asset, which is the German uh, fixed income market. I think at the, at the current circumstances, the central bank has to look at that as a short-term, hopefully short-term, aberration of market pricing rather than a signal about what, uh, say, the future course of monetary policy is likely to look, uh, look like. Uh, you could only sort of imagine that that yield makes sense from the, press, from the perspective of the central bank. If you really felt that this kind of uncertainty was going to dampen spending across the Eurozone, business investment consumer spending, and it's far too early to draw that conclusion.